Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special edition of Channel 781 News. Uh, today, we're joined by community activist Pat Murphy, who is renowned for helping the unhoused community of, of Waltham. I'll let her talk a little bit more about that and why she's with us here today. Hello, Pat. Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. Thank you uh, for coming on and uh, chatting with me today. Um, so describe in a few words, why is it that you are locally known to the unhoused community of Waltham? Sure. Uh, a couple of years ago, just prior to the pandemic, I left a full-time job and became a real estate agent. And I found that there's a lot of downtime. Um, so I had an opportunity to work with the folks at the community day center in doing some of their clothing drives. And what I found is that I was able to assist people who wanted to participate and wanted to donate but were unable to unable to do so due to their own personal time constraints. Mm -hmm. So the way I began this activism, as you call it, um, is I would use social media. I'm on several different Facebook groups and the community day center would contact me and say, Pat, we have a need. We have a guy that needs a three X jacket uh, mm -hmm. for the winter. He has no coat. Can you help? Uh, so then I would go out and I would put it out on Facebook. I would contact my personal uh, uh, contact list. Mm -hmm. And I was having coffee with a gentleman who actually had a 3X coat when that call came in. Uh, so the community uh, of the unhoused in Waltham looks to me for necessities. Mm -hmm. Can you come up with a pair of size 10 boots? I don't have a winter coat. I, my jeans are, have holes in them. So I would put that request out onto Facebook and drive around and collect these items and uh, deliver them to those in need. So some people call me the clothing lady. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a, a convenience store one day and a gentleman came up to me and said, hey, you're the sneaker lady. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't happen to recall his name. He goes, you gave me these shoes, see? And I said, okay, yeah. He goes, well, they're kind of worn out now. Do you think you might help me secure another pair? And I was unable to connect with him, but I left them at the convenience store where he frequented and he mm -hmm. got them there. Um, so I've been known to uh, connect with the community of Waltham, get the needed product or goods and get it into the hands of the people who needed it. So that's kind of how I started with this. I had free time on my hands and I had yeah. always, and I had always wanted to do um, uh, community service kinds of things, mm -hmm. but I was working a corporate career path and I had no time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this has allowed me to do that. What, what impresses me a lot about the work that you've been doing for the past few years is, um, is two things that don't usually happen in this kind of community service, charity, Kind of thing one is that you feel specific needs yes you know there are so many places where people can get items um they can get food they can get clothing but a lot of people can't find exactly what they're looking for they can't find their exact size they can't find you know their exact uh what they desire um it's usually just a you should be happy with the things that are provided for you uh, yeah. that are offered um and you provide a very specific need which is exactly what people are looking for and also uh which i'm really impressed by is meeting people where they are um you go out onto the streets and find people there and then talk to people on the streets where they're at and i find that really inspiring because a lot of the time i wouldn't say a lot of the time sometimes uh people that are s such in the depths of addiction or new to the area um or just you know turned off from agoraphobia or you know just a bad vibe they got from the places where people can get resources they don't go to these places and so you meet people where they are um and bring the items that they're looking for to them where they are at that current stage of their life whether that be on the charles river path or on the common or off of main street um and so you know that really that need isn't filled by many people there's like two in Waltham that I can think of. Um, and so I'm very inspired by that. And it's a very, it's a big need. I mean, you're talking about what you do, but to the scale, you're, you've donated thousands and thousands of pounds of 
of clothing and food and being really the, the middle person for that, just the conduit to, for people that want to help and people that need help. And the people that want to help don't know how and the people that need help don't know how to get there. And you provide that space, that role. Um, and I'm, I'm really inspired by that. Um, so uh, are you surprised by how impactful the work is? Did you realize like just how much you were gonna affect people's lives? And uh, would you like to share a story or two um, from your travels? This was a conscious decision that I made. I had, uh, regarding my volunteer work, I could have gone to work for the American Cancer Society or mm -hmm. the Lung Society, but I, I, there is such a grateful sense of reward mm -hmm. when I give someone a pair of shoes that are gonna change their day. Mm -hmm. Change their um, summer, really, change their winter. It does, Even it does. And, and um, so, I wanted to keep it local. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of community organizations I could have been involved with. I'm, I'm a, a freelancer, as, mm -hmm. as we say, um, and I'm a liaison. Mostly I'm a liaison. Mm -hmm. I get a message from Jill at Chaplains on the Way or Carolyn and Nina and Alex at the Community Day Center and say, we have this need, can you help? And then I go out and source it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. that corporate background kicking in again. Um, so, you know, I, I'm a deliverer and I'm not so much getting it all to myself. Um, I'm not responsible for, for gathering, uh, for donating all of the items, but I'm the gatherer and I deliver. Mm -hmm. So recently we have a, a woman in the unhoused community who needs a wheelchair and she had a wheelchair, but it broke. Now, Jill sent me a note asking me if I had access to a wheelchair and I, I said, Jill, those are really hard to come by. Mm -hmm. um, they're expensive and they're just difficult to get. But I put the word out on Facebook and someone whose parent had passed away in the last year mm. had an absolutely brand new, still in the box, wow. trans transport wheelchair, which means it's lightweight. And so I was able to get that to the day center. And then Jill was able to bring it to the woman who needed it. That is a very specific need mm -hmm. um, that none of the organizations that work with the unhoused could have provided. Definitely, yeah. So within two days, I was able to deliver that, which really made me feel good because I changed that woman's day and her, her talk, life. Talk about winter or summer. That's, a, that's changing their life if, yes. uh, if it you know survives that long. Um, we hope, we hope. We had a, a friend who unfortunately passed away this past year. Um, last year, we got him new boots. Somebody bought boots. They were his size. I think we, they were actually purchased for him because he had a, a larger size foot. And he was beyond amazed that mm -hmm. someone actually spent money on him, not knowing him, to get him a pair of winter boots. Uh, winter boots are key to this community mm -hmm. because if they're unhoused, if they don't have a, a, a place to live, they're on the street all the time. Mm -hmm. If they're in the shelter, uh, the men or women's shelter, they're out from eight in the morning until four in the afternoon. They need the boots. Mm -hmm. So it, it changed his winter. Um, and every time I saw him, He'd run up to me and give me a hug. I'm like, really? They weren't for me. He goes, but you gave them to me, Pat. And that was that was so important. And I just love that. Uh, so those are the things that make you feel good, that make me feel good. Mm -hmm. We had a gentleman who I'm, I haven't caught up with him lately. He got a job at a local uh, tire and automotive store. Uh, and I had brought in my car for service. And he said to the technician, um, oh, I know that lady, I wanna go say hello, because my car is kind of recognizable mm. uh, by its color. So he came out and said hello, and I was so excited for him that he had a job and that he was doing well. And I looked at his feet and he had sneakers on. So he, wor he works in an automotive shop, you need steel-toed boots. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, let me go see what I have. I have a treasure trove in my basement oh. um, and I got his shoe size. Now I didn't have the right size shoe for him, but I posted it on Facebook 
and a generous member of the community bought him a pair of brand new boots. And I took it to the shop and they brought this gentleman out to the front counter and I was able to give him the, the boots and everyone clapped and he was beyond, they're just so grateful Absolutely. and beyond amazed. Um, you know, and, and throughout the winter, mostly the winter, I drive around with a trunk full of hats and socks and mm -hmm. scarves and occasionally there's a winter coat or a blanket or a sleeping bag. And when I come across people, I go, hey, are you warm enough? And they go, eh, you know, I said, do you need a hat? Do you need gloves? You know, do you need socks? Um, so I, I remember one Sunday morning, I was going through the drive through at the bank and I saw three of our unhoused neighbors going through the parking lot. And I flagged them down to say good morning. And they looked cold. So I said, what do you guys need? And so I popped the trunk and everyone got a hat and one guy got a pair of gloves as well. So it's, it's acknowledging that they're part of our community, mm. that being acknowledged as a human being is important. There are unhoused people in Waltham, I don't know, but I always say hello mm -hmm. and they always smile back. You know, I'm not invisible. Um, Absolutely. And I you, think you that, that is that important as well. Yeah, you hear that all the time, just the lack of acknowledgement, the lack of feeling human. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and as the winter months get closer, uh, you um, in the past have put on uh, clothing drives um, and that is approaching. Why don't you tell us about that and what you're looking for as well? Sure. Uh, so when you're when you're unhoused, when you are homeless and literally do not have a chest of drawers or a closet to put your winter coat away for the season, uh, as October and November roll around, you need to find a new coat because you don't have last year's coat. Um, so what I do is I gather, again, I use Facebook, I use my network of friends to solicit, you know, who, who has winter coats for men or women, these sizes uh, that they would be interested in donating. We look for items that are more ski jackets rather than wool coats because our community of unhoused will not wear the wool coats. They get wet, they're heavy, they smell, they're hard to wash. Um, so a ski jacket type of, of jacket is best. Um, they also are always needing hoodies. Fleece is a fabulous warm material that they can layer underneath. Uh, jeans, boots, hats, gloves. Uh, this year, I have more boots in my basement, but not an awful lot of coats or hats. So those are items that we would be interested in gathering. Uh, one of make, the things... Make a plug for socks as well. Socks, always socks. Always. Um, the Community Day Center and the folks here in Waltham uh, request, uh, require that we use new socks. So if you're at Costco and see a 10-pack of socks, grab an extra one uh, and think about donating it to the Community Day Center. Mm. where wet feet from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. Mm. is death. Absolutely. It, it, it causes all kinds of foot disease and uh, frostbite. So that's really important. And, and are, is, this, is there a date for this? Are you trying to do a, like a day of uh, people bringing things to your basement? Are you driving around or is this an ongoing thing? It's an ongoing thing. I like mm -hmm. to uh, challenge folks as we head up to November 1st or, or uh, the, the 15th, say Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. Most of us have checked out our winter coats. Do they still fit? Are they, are they uh, in the shape that we want? You know, do we need, do we need a new ski jacket? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Consider donating your, your other item. What we do ask for is that they are in good condition. Mm -hmm. My first foray into the donations was a clothing drive I held during COVID, actually. Uh, and it was a shop event. I think you were there, Chris. Yep, yep. I uh, it was a shop event. And so I had gathered all these clothes and people, the, the unhoused would come through and select. They could get shirts and belts and jeans and jackets, all of that. And one gentleman um, questioned the quality of a, a sweater that he was holding. It was a fleece and it had a hole in it. He goes, you know, Pat, I may be homeless, 
but I don't want to look homeless. Mm. And so we strive for, for providing items that are of quality that, that will uh, make a person feel like uh, they're, they're respectable and, and part of the community. Mm. So when you donate through me, I check everything before it goes out. Uh, but I really appreciate things that are washed because wouldn't you like to have a new clean, a uh, clean winter jacket rather than someone else's uh, ski adventures from last year on it. So we ask for clean clothes. They don't have to be new, but still have some life left in them. Uh, no stains, no rips, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Boots are a big issue mm -hmm. uh, because again, that's another thing like a coat that if you live on the street, you have no place to store your winter boots. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of a season, they get discarded. So there is no date. If you have something that you'd like to pay, have me come pick up, you can contact the community day center and they would get you in touch with me. That's wonderful. Yep. And just to reiterate, that's ski jacket, uh, like waterproof material rather than wool, yes. hoodies, fleece, jeans, boots, hats, gloves, socks, even blankets. I want to plug blankets too. Blankets. Um, um, so we would want more fleece like blankets or polyester blankets instead of wool blankets. Yeah. And yeah, wool they, gets heavy. It yeah, smells, get wet. it gets wet and it can't really be washed and they're not going to the dry cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, so, so machine washable would be what yeah. we would ask for. This is a great service, Pat. It literally changes people's lives. And the, uh, and I always get worried. You know, I love the fall, but ever since I started doing community work with uh, the unhoused, like as soon as the fall hits, I start to get a little worried. I think about the people that are sleeping out on the uh, Charles River Path, and I'm wondering, like, how cold is it yep. tonight? How cold is it going to be in a week? Um, so definitely getting those resources out to them is important, and donating uh, these things is part of that. Um, so final question, um, if a resident of Waltham wanted to get more involved in helping the unhoused population of Waltham, what would you say? What's the million dollar answer here? There are a couple of ways to do it. You're always welcome to reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, sadly, you have to be on Facebook to find me. Mm. Uh, you can contact the Community Day Center or Chaplains on the Way. Mm. There are, so all of us would accept donations. The Community Day Center also has an Amazon wish list uh, where we have requests for socks and underwear and um, thermals will be coming up. We'll need long underwear for the people who are out all day. So that's all on an Amazon shopping list mm -hmm. and it ships to my house. Oh so that my it's an, yeah. <laughs> the, we haven't really they, talked about how what your basement looks like. It's Yeah, well, you know, I've been clearing it out. Um, but uh, so all of that ships to me and then I deliver it down to the community day center because they really don't have a, a mechanism to receive safely. Yeah, 24 hours a day. Yeah. 24 yeah. hours a day. And then the final thing we did, we started last winter for the night shelter was an evening meal program. So this year, they'll, the community day center is opening their new building to, uh, I think up to 20 people can sleep there overnight. Mm -hmm. And so they come in and they're provided a hot meal uh, or a meal. And that last year was donated totally by the community. Mm -hmm. We provided, I think I counted 104 nights. These That's folks awesome. received home cooked meals or pizzas or, mm -hmm. or um, they, they love the ethnic food. Some nights they got tacos, some nights they got Spanish food, some nights they got Italian. Um, so members of the community would sign up and there's a, uh, a spreadsheet that we'll be putting out. I, I forget what it's called. Meal. It's a sign up genie. Sign up genie. It's a meal program that mm -hmm. you would sign up for a particular day mm -hmm. and uh, you would be committed to cooking for that evening and you would deliver mm -hmm. it to the day center by seven o'clock that evening mm -hmm. so that the folks can have dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a huge success, mm -hmm. huge. And it meant financially a savings mm -hmm. for the community day center that was a hundred meals they did not have to prepare purchase Absolutely. and plan for yeah um, uh, 
some people uh, know that I uh, ran the night shelter in the winter of 2020, uh, and this was before the sign of genius. And it was my responsibility to organize those meals and and get them. And a lot of it, a lot of it did come from the community, and uh, you know, very grateful for that. But sometimes I had to scramble, and so the adoption of the of a sign of genius in 2021 was genius. And yeah, I mean, you know, the community day center provides a lot, but they. Financially, they can't do everything, and uh, those meals is so important. It's so important uh, for the for the population that sleeps there. Um, I'm very excited about the new building. Really excited to see how it affects people. Being able to uh, shower, do laundry, it's it's a game changer. Yes, indeed. Um, so thank you very much, Pat, for coming on. Uh, this has been great. Um, I hope folks uh, see this and realize that they have, um, you know, maybe a winter jacket that they're no longer using or a pair of jeans that uh, they no longer like. Um, and uh, we can make some connections happen. Well, thank you very, very much, Pat. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Have a good All one. Bye-bye. Right.